Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm testing out a new and improved version of SpaceX's Starship. You can sort of see the texture improvement. Uh, the fins are still procedural wings. I have not made fins, I will do so. Uh, but most of the improvements are on the interior, though the exterior texture is uh, clearly better. You can compare it to the Super Heavy. The Super Heavy uh, is using the old texture that I had on my Starship. And so we've got the new texture up here. But yes, the interior we're going to have to test in orbit. So first of all, we'll launch. You can see a little hatch there. Put a little hatch and uh, that's a docking port as well. Uh, you might guess what's going on in the interior and it took a lot of work. Especially if you've seen some of my other videos recently. So, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. We are not carrying any payload at the moment. I think I might want to make the body a little bit shinier. It's a very dark metal right now. I suppose it's looking a little bit better at this altitude. I expect I'll be using the same texture for the fins once I get to them. Obviously the front end no longer looks like this. The window arrangement for Starship is not like this anymore but I spent so much time working on this that uh, you know that 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 pattern is actually very annoying to do and I like this better anyway so it's not my fault that they can't do it in real life the header tank actually takes up the front portion I've accounted for that in here so uh, the interior doesn't go all the way up to the front as it used to it cuts off about here so that's changed. But yeah, sad that uh, we can't have this fancy thing, but I sort of knew ahead of time that we wouldn't be able to have such a fancy window arrangement to begin with. I imagine it'll be even smaller in the end. Well, since we're not carrying much of a payload, uh, I think we can reserve plenty for a return to launch site. Let's just shut it down there. Uh, and separation and ignition. And the purpleness continues. Of course, the fin arrangement on Super Heavy is, I think, changed or, yeah, so that that whole body will have to be redone, but certainly not to the extent that I redid this business, as you'll soon see. It actually sort of looks cute in, uh, from this angle. Kept put my finger on what animal it looks like, but it definitely reminds me of an animal from this angle. Definitely something cute. Otter? Maybe an otter? Our dry mass at the moment, by the way, is a little bit light at 110 tons. I may reconsider that, and that's because the the old version had the crew pod separate so that we could have an escape pod, but due to the nature of the interior right now, uh, I do not have a separate escape pod version, and I'll have to think about whether I want to implement that again or not, but that would require the forward window structure to be different if I wanted an escape pod now. It would require basically ejecting one of the decks inside. There are decks. I haven't finished the interior yet. That's gonna take some doing, but I've started it. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do about people's bunks, if you will. 
Also, exercise machines. Hmm. That will take some modeling. Oh, we can throttle down. I'm not turning off the sea level engines because there's no need given our Delta V right now, and since we're just parking in low Earth orbit for the moment. Okay, that will do. I'm just going to have a kill rotation. Oh, I should verify that the RCS is working. It looks like it. Okay, that seems fine. Okay, now inside. Well, we'll need to get a Kerbal out of their seat here. And again, the camera, let's see, free is definitely better. Oop. The carpeting is getting in the way. <laughs> How often can we say that? Uh, go, uh, there we go. Okay. Maffin, all right. It's a deal. Leave seat. So Maffin Kerman has left her seat. I haven't really finished the instrument panel yet. There's a floor with more seats on top. The cockpit area has 13 seats right now. And so, and it's on three floors. So there's an upper floor, there's the actual floor that the pilot and co-pilot, if you will, are on. And then there's a floor down below here. Could, could fit more, but um, the header tank sort of complicated things a bit. Used to fit many more, like 24 or so, in the cockpit area. Oh, is that collider working? Well, it's a little bit dodgy, but it's not not working. Okay. Up, up, up. These are all command chairs, right? They can get out of them, but there's not a proper IBA per se. Okay. And the colliders have to be just right, and there are a lot of them. You can uh, peer down below through the decks there. By the way, the orientation of the chairs, I saw some people making diagrams of the interior of the Starship. It's worth a reminder that they have to be this way shuttle style, in other words, uh, feet to the heat tiles, if you will, not feet to the engines, because when they're sitting down, they need to be back, you know, uh, be lying on their backs when we're taking off or going through and it's a better orientation for re-entry, so. Um, generally, you can have feet to the thrust, but not for actual liftoff from Earth, and that's the way things are oriented there. Uh, there's sort of an ugly seam here. Sometimes I can't really see this, because the s Starship is so big, I can't see the details when I'm trying to uh, model it, so, well, texture it sometimes. Oh, uh, we can't... well, there's uh, something there. But, oh, there's Earth. The floors don't quite line up with the uh, windows, but it's not too bad. Yeah, we didn't really get a chance to look up in the cockpit. I better watch out for EV repellent, though. Hmm. Yeah, but the windows are there. Um, let's see, the upper level only is the only one that actually gets the benefit from the windows. That'll be the first class passengers there. Up, oh, but we can't really see Earth very well. Up oh, there, uh, got a little glimpse of Earth there. All right. Back down. Ah. Uh. So yeah, there's a lot of interior to deal with, and lots of figuring on how we want to fill things. I did put plants in, that's about it. But they're not the best looking. I, I didn't model the plants, they actually came as part of a Unity package that I got. Uh, it's a free Unity package available on the asset store. They're looking a little bit dark, too, the plants, I mean. Anyway, so we have plants. That's about it, though. No, no uh, accommodations. And past that floor, the windows run out. So this is all 
it's gonna be storage area um, or you know lower class accommodations without windows and uh, this is the airlock area where also the cargo will be the way this works is that um, and actually that should say open I, I, I don't know it depends on which way around you want it but that hatch closes and then the hatch to the outside opens so that's how this airlock area works trying to make the lunar starship is a whole other deal and so out the airlock and we are outside of starship it's tough uh, making the textures look okay so close up when you know the, the thing is so big but yeah uh, it doesn't look great out here but it's okay it's not that heavy either as far as the textures are concerned the whole thing is about 40 megabytes at the moment which is less than some things of course I haven't done the fins yet but I don't expect that to increase the load by too much so back inside for Maffin out and see wait why can't we access the hatch now we were able to before hmm that's weird actually well we can do it by switching vessels that's for sure and yeah I think I've got open and closed reversed so the outside hatch closes we verify that mapping cannot go through the outside hatch it should have a collider on it at the moment Oop. lots of colliders lots and lots of colliders that's not looking quite the way I wanted to, but anyway, yes, Maffin collides with the hatch to the outside properly, and with the floor. At least the interior padding doesn't look too bad here. Hmm nothing too obtrusive as far as seems so we have to do a bit of I mean yeah it's 50, uh, it's 40 megabytes now but I have to put stuff in here except for the plants and that that could take uh, some space you know but I'm hoping that what I fill this stuff up with and by the way the decks are 2.4 meters apart so that's the that's the distance I chose and yeah I don't know if that's what they intend, but that's what I decided on. And hopefully the stuff that I make for this will also be applicable to a station or, you know, like greenhouses on a surface. So these planters, I want to, I keep bumping her into things. The planters, I hope, will be useful for greenhouses as well. I did not make them just for Starship, and I expect any other props that I'm going to add for Starship's interior will be the same way. They're going to be for stations or other things. These floors will also be used for larger stations. Obviously, the command chairs are the command chairs. Board, do not disassemble. Okay, so that is the interior of Starship at the moment, and I'm still working on it. But uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting, all right. Too bad the life support stuff doesn't work properly in 1.11. I had problems with the life support and EVA propellant in 1.11, otherwise I'd be using that. And the reason that I would like to use that is because of the, the inventory system and engineer system would allow me to uh, have them carry stuff into Starship and place stuff in Starship, right? Uh, they could they could add stuff to Starship or add supplies to the to the airlock area stuff that they could you know build outside. There's a whole range of possibilities if we have the engineering function available, the construction function that engineers have in 1.11. But 
that's all useless if the EVA propellant gets consumed too quickly or the or the life support system doesn't work very well. And of course, part of what we want to carry in the cargo area is the life support stuff. So yeah, I do want the life support system being used in 1.11 when I work with this. But anyway, that's all for later. Now it is part of the pass-through system and we've got stuff inside that could be used for a station as well, like the decks and uh, some of the controls and of course the planters. So I look forward to expanding on this whole notion in a continuing fashion. So there you are, Starship everyone. Starship with an interior. More innovations in Kerbal Space Program. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.